In this video, I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to sell video games on eBay. I've been a full-time eBay seller for the last three and a half years, and the video game category has proven year after year to be a really fast-selling, easy item to sell on eBay. And just last year, I was able to do over $20,000 in video game sales. So it's my goal in this video today to show you exactly how I go about listing up my video games to sell super fast so that you can have the same success as well. The one that I've got here as an example for this video is Rumble Racing on the PlayStation 2. It's actually in really, really good condition and we do have a manual as well, which is gonna help us get this thing sold. So um, just in the seller hub under the listings tab, um, I'm just gonna click on create list and then single listing. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring up a search bar and all you need to do is type in the game that you're gonna to wanna to sell. So we're gonna go with Rumble Racing and then we're also gonna say PS2 because we want matches for the PlayStation 2 only. We don't want different consoles. Now what we're doing here is we're actually able to fast track our listing process by copying the metadata of previous existing listings. Now, what I like to do is I like to look for a title that's quite filled out. It's got a lot of characters that we can easily manipulate um, to create our own title structure, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later in this video. But I like the look of this one right here, actually. Um, it seems to have a couple of item specifics in there as well, and I really like the look of the title. So I'm gonna click on that, and that's gonna bring us up to a confirm, a confirm details page. You'll see that there's a bunch of item specifics already included and the title there as well. So all we need to do is click on any form of condition we think this one might be in. Now, I'm always pretty reluctant to type in like new. A perfect example of the reason why I won't do like new for this is you'll see a blemish on the front of the cover, albeit the disc is in really good condition, but just because of that little blemish on the front there, I'm gonna go ahead and say very good condition. And that'll be enough for us to continue on and get this listing started. So the next step in the process is to take some photos of your item. Now, I've actually gone ahead and I've already taken my six photos. I do these six photos for every single one of my listings. And I think uh, photography is one of the most crucial steps to getting your item sold on eBay. I've got some really, really good box lights that I've been using for the last couple of years. And it just makes the photos incredibly bright, uh, easy to see. And um, I, I really do recommend that you guys consider getting yourself some box lights. Uh, the ones that I use are linked in the description. So you can go and check those ones out. Um, but also just a white background as well is very, very important. And as you can see here, I've got some really well lit up photos on a white background. And the photo structure that I will always go through when it comes to photographing my, uh, taking photos of my video games is a top down shot, which you've got here. That's the main photo, the hero image of the item. Um, so I've got my top down shot there of the case closed. I'll then turn it over and I'll just take a back shot of the video game and then I'll open it up and I'll show that there's a manual or not a manual. Uh, and then the disc of the game itself. From there, we take another photo, which is a close-up shot of the actual disc itself. And then I pop it out and I take a photo that tries to really clearly depict any surface scratches on the disc as possible. And this one here is in incredibly good condition, so there wasn't too many scratches to show. Um, and then finally, I take a spine shot as well, just to make sure that every single aspect of this game, of this product that we're trying to sell, uh, is being shown to the buyer. So those six photos, that same photo structure, it takes 20 seconds to do. You can blast them out on your mobile phone. You don't need a fancy camera. Um, the mobile phone is completely fine. Just make sure there's a white background and it is a well-lit room that you're taking your photos in. So I'm pretty happy with those photos there. And I'm also pretty happy with the title that I'm looking at here for this game as well. Now, just like the photos, I have a title structure that I'll always use when it comes to selling video games on eBay. And you've got to realize that the title is one of the most important, crucial steps uh, to getting your item found in through, the, uh, through the search engine. Uh, and then ultimately sold based on the price. So photos, title, and price are the three main elements to creating this listing. So when it comes to the title, this title here is actually really quite good. I will always start with the front end of the most important information. So that being the title of the video game. So Rumble Racing will always go in there first, and then the console make. So this is a Sony PlayStation 2, and I'll also do the abbreviated version of the console as well. So Sony PlayStation 2, and then PS2, because there's multiple different ways that people are gonna be searching up to try and find PlayStation 2 games, and I wanna cover my bases in both areas. Um, so Rumble Racing, Sony PlayStation 2, game complete plus manual. If it didn't have a manual, I wouldn't be saying complete plus manual, but in this situation, I can say that, and that is absolutely a selling feature for this game. Um, the only thing that I would potentially add to this is PAL. 
Um, that is basically just the abbreviation to say that this is an Australian playback game, uh, which is definitely something people are going to be looking for. So we've used 63 out of 80 characters there, and I would say to try and fall anywhere between 60 and 80, the more the better. The more key search terms that you've got in this video game, um, definitely the better. Um, so I'm happy with that title. Really, really good title structure. Always follow that process of front-ending the most important information first because that's what your buyers are going to be searching up when they go to the eBay search engine and it stands you the best place of getting found. Um, you'll see here, item category, video games, completely fine. Already pre-auto generated, so that's no issues there. And then we've got some pre-auto generated item specifics as well. Um, so we've got the game name, we've got the platform correct, the UPC is just the barcode code on the back there. Um, we could go ahead and delete that and type in our barcode code, but I'm actually just going to delete that and leave it without putting anything in there. It's not a massive one. You can see here that there's a lot of different search numbers to let you know how many times it gets searched. So something like genre is something we can 100% put in to help us out. And I'm just going to say racing because uh, it's a car racing game. And then also the release year, it's giving me a frequently selected 2007, but you can actually find the year on the back of the video game. And this one says 2001. So I'm just going to type in 2001 there as well. Um, so what that shows is now a large number of these item specifics already put in there, and I've only had to put in one or two to, to fix it up. Um, so that's perfect. Variations, there's no variations to this game. The condition of the game is already pre-selected as very good. And then we need to write a little description, but eBay has this new AI description tool. And if we just click on that button, it'll auto-generate a really nice description depicting what this video game is. I can and I will, in certain uh, circumstances, type in uh, light surface scratches, scratches on disc. If it is a game where there is some surface scratches and it wasn't potentially captured that clearly in the photos, I wanna double up by just mentioning it in the description. I think that's a really important step if you do have a game that does have a couple of different bits and pieces, uh, a few different marks. Um, so the next step is pricing. Now, like I said, photos, really important. The title, really important to nail. And this is the third big guy. This is the pricing that we need to make sure we get right as well. So I'll go back to our uh, search bar screen and I'll show you how I go about trying to work out what item to sell it for. Now, this is definitely something you can do on your mobile phone as well, working between mobile and laptop, but I'm going to stick with the laptop for now, and I'm just going to type in here Rumble Racing PS2, which is what we initially did um, to, to list this game. So there's a couple of different price points there. When it's in black, as you can see there, that basically means that the game is unsold, but you can actually go down the bottom here, and you can see a filter just down the bottom on the left hand side, there'll be a sold items and completed. If you click on sold, both of these boxes tick. And then you get a list here of all of the games for your match and the price points that it's sold for. And as you can see there, it's no longer black. So that is a sold listing price. Now there is one more step that I like to do here. And I like to go over to the sort button and I like to click on highest price first. And then what that does is it just lists it up from the highest price down to the lowest price and it shows that we've got 39 results. And those 39 results also include international sales. International sales always have an italic in the text. So as you can see there, that's the start of the international sales. Uh, but we do have one, two, three, and four domestic sales within Australia. Now, I do take into consideration international sales because I personally sell internationally, um, but I am gonna try and base my price point off the domestic prices that I'm seeing. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But you'll see here, there's an $18 uh, sale price there. Now this one, I'm taking into consideration that it was done through auction. Typically speaking, you make less money through auctions as you do as opposed to buying it now. Um, so the buy now feature is definitely the way we're gonna be selling all of our video games. Um, so there was, there's three options here. We've got a, a buy it now sale of $39.99. Uh, then we've got a $47.96 and we've got a $50 and $11. Um, so basically, anywhere between $40 to $50 is what this game is going to be worth, and they are all pre-owned video games as well. Now, I can see here that this second uh, item definitely has a manual as well. Um, so these are other considerations, and I also want to check to make sure that they are all black label, which they all appear to be. They've all got the black label at the top of the PlayStation 2. Um, so I think, based on what we're seeing here, I could probably go for $49.95, and if I put my best offers on, uh, we might get somebody off of $40 to $45 and we'll just go ahead and accept it.
All right, so that brings us back to our pricing screen and we're just gonna go ahead and say buy it now. And we're gonna say 49.99 and that's gonna be our price point based on the research that we've done. So we're not aimlessly putting a price on it. There is some method behind that. And if you were a brand new seller, and you knew that the range of price points was between $40 to $50, I would actually potentially even go $45. So let's do that. We'll go $45 to try and get this one sold. There might be a best offer come through for 40 bucks and we'll be happy to take it. Um, the other consideration with pricing is you can also search to see what the listed prices are and then you can price match based on solds and active uh, listings, which is the pool that you're about to jump yourself into. Um, so if you can be priced slightly less, you're gonna search up as the most uh, cheapest um, not that you want to be the absolute cheapest, but it's just another consideration to try and see where that price point is going to be best fit. Um, allow offers is something we absolutely turn on. Um, we, we're not going to put any optional offers in. We're just going to say that we're happy to accept any offers that come through. And that's a really important selling feature. So for postage, I have just set up a policy that I think you guys should always be using when it comes to video games. So if we have a look at that policy um, I've just basically created something that says that we're going to do domestic on a flat rate and it's going to be using a regular tracked post letter. Um, I'll show you guys that when we do go ahead to do our postage, but I've just selected that as the option because it's going to be a single video game um, sale and that single video game can fit into a letter. Um, but I am also going to be using free postage. Um, handling time is always the same business day uh, for me. Uh, and then also to international postage is something that I always do. About 10% of my sales have been international sales uh, and that goes for the video game category as well. You're getting about 10% of your sales uh, go overseas. So I've got a calculated postage set up for this one. Um, it's gonna go worldwide. eBay will work out the price point for the postage um, depending on the buyer's location. Um, so that's set up with no locations excluded. So I'm happy to send this one literally anywhere around the world. Um, the only other little thing you need to do after that is I just use a set of table scales and I've also got uh, a, just a household measuring tape. Um, you just want to weigh the item out. This one's worked out to be 143 grams. It's 19 by 13 by 2 centimeters, just doing some uh, measurements of the game um, so that when the item does go on to sell internationally, those measurements will help determine what that price point is going to be uh, for the buyer on the other end. Uh, promoted listings, um, you just want to make sure that you're ticking the box there for promoted and you always want to do, even though there's a suggested ad rate of 9.6%, promoted listings, if you're not sure, um, it basically just refers to additional uh, impressions, additional, um, it'll show your listing to more people at whatever rate you want to be paying. So um, rather than the suggested ad rate that eBay always recommends, it's always well inflated more than what it needs to be. I actually blanket 3% promoted listings across every single one of my listings. Um, and 50% of my sales have come from promoting at 3%. That 3% is the fee that you're actually going to pay on top of your standard fees. So I think when an item sells, it's around about 12% in fees. And by saying you're happy to pay an extra 3% means that you're ultimately going to pay 15% in fees uh, if the item sells via a promoted listing. So when that impression gets shown, uh, there'll be a promoted listing impression. If a buyer clicks on it and then buys it, that 3% is going to be added to your fee. But if somebody finds it organically, which is where the titles are so, so important, um, if you're found organically, somebody's just naturally typed in Rubble Racing, you've just appeared, um, then you don't pay that extra 3%. So for only 3% in additional fees, I think 50% of my sales coming from it is just a huge discrepancy to let me know that I need to keep doing promoted listings. Uh, and hopefully um, that's enough information for you guys to know it's the right thing to do as well. So 3% always across the board. If It doesn't need to be video games. Literally any product that you're selling, 3% will always work well. Uh, and then I'm set up with the managed payments. If you've created your profile, obviously by listing up your item here today, um, you have that profile created. You've got managed payments set up for payments to go into your bank account uh, once the item goes on to sell. And then from there, you literally just have to hit the listing button and this thing is live, ready to be sold for $49.99. We know it's competitive. Hopefully it sells quick. All right, so let's say that our Rumble Racing game has now gone on to sell in lightning quick time. We've got a two-hour sell-through rate and this thing is ready to be shipped out. There's a few different ways that we can go about it. For this exact game, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it into what we had set up with the, uh, with the shipping policy. We're going to put it into one of these, which is a medium 
tracked post envelope from Australia Post. So there's going to be a tracking number right there that this one is going to be sent out in. I don't do anything. I don't do any bubble wrap or anything like that. I don't put anything into the game. Uh, some people might put bubble wrap into the actual game. I don't do that and I've sold almost thousands of these video games and I've never had an issue with delivery. Um, so that would literally just go into that. You just have to put the sender details on the front, um, your sorry sender details on the back and who it's going to there. Um, and that's literally all you have to do with that. Say you were to sell two video games. If you're selling two video games in a listing, I'd put it into a large uh, tracked envelope. So that'll go into there. You just put them side by side, no issues at all. If you've got three to five video games, if you're doing a bit of a video game bundle, I think a box is always best. Um, so I've just got a box here that I picked up from my local timber and hardware store. That's when I'll start to use some bubble wrap just so they don't bounce around. And then I might put some butcher's paper uh, to infill the box as well. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll basically do some measurements based on the size of the box, depending on how many video games uh, we're trying to sell. So. There's a couple of different methods. It all depends upon what size of video game you're trying to sell. But for us today, which is gonna be the mainly the one that you're gonna be doing, um, you're gonna be wanting to put them into an envelope. You can also go ahead with an untracked envelope. These envelopes basically just require a couple of stamps. Uh, it's gonna work out to be a couple of dollars cheaper. But eBay really does stress having a tracking number. And you can actually just scan that barcode there on your eBay app and it will immediately transfer the tracking number off this envelope into the seller account for that buyer to then be able to see where this delivery is at. Um, so it avoids so much customer service when you've got a tracking number and for the sake of an extra one to two dollars versus the untracked method, I just think you should send all of your video games with a tracked envelope um, or a satchel or a box that will provide a tracking number for buyer confidence, which is just something that eBay is pressing so heavily. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do that. That's gonna be shipped off to the buyer and that is how you sell video games on eBay. Now, you might be really excited to start selling on eBay and video games might be the category for you. You might have just decided that I wanna get into this a little bit. It looks pretty easy. Well, there's a video right here which shows you a great way to find video games that you can sell at a really high price but buy at a really cheap price. Go and check it out. We'll see you soon.